start uh you know talking about it so we have a variety of topics we're going to uh talk about today but i think the one thing that really sticks out of mind we also lived together for a couple years as well while we were in college um but i'll never forget like we had this tv on top of the fridge in our kitchen it was just this old crt kind of tv and uh one night i came home for, travis was working like second shift i think at this point in time so he got home about 11 11 30 yeah. and i would get home about midnight because i worked at a place called ebash and so we closed at midnight so i get home and so we'd always just like eat our dinner i guess at that point in time together and one night <laughs> we were watching we had espn classic and it's like a freaking 2001 louisville basketball game and out of nowhere i think somebody's at the free throw line and travis is like is that larry o'bannon and sure enough, it was like Larry O'Bannon, like shooting free throws. So it's just that random knowledge that him and I can kind of connect about that we've talked about, you know, countless times. Skip classes just to sit in the the comments yeah, I think, area. Uh, I think my favorite thing was we were talking about that UCLA Missouri game, and I could not for the life of me remember who hit that layup. <laughs> and then it was like a week later, you were like Tyus Edney. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, it was him. And that's what, you know, this was before, like, this is back when he had, like, text Cha-Cha to get any of these answers and stuff like that. Yeah. So we didn't have Wikipedia and the power of just looking up stuff at our, you know, at the, you know, at our will on our phones. Um, so, you know, we kind of have, like, a list of what we're going to be, you know, talking down about. We got, you know, we're touch on some March Madness, of course. We're going to talk about some NBA basketball coming up to the All-Star break. Um, of course, going to talk about some baseball you're seeing how spring training is just now getting started um as you know as, as well as you know we got some topics about the future because it's going to be a busy nfl offseason i feel like i think Schefter or mina twine mina kimes put out that you know who has the most money to spend and the freaking patriots we'll talk about this later but the patriots have some serious cash to spend so you know i'm just curious to see what they're going to do so you know our first topic moving in on which you know moving on in the future I'll, i'm gonna think i'm gonna like start working on slides and having all that kind of stuff so we can like transition in the topic so it can look really good um so travis first up coaching hot seats in ncaa ben's basketball tell me who you got so the biggest one i have and i, and I can't figure out for the life of me why this guy still has a job is dave lito with DePaul. This guy has been there. This is his second stint. I think he, this is his seventh season now, and he's come in last place like six out of those seven seasons. Now, I don't understand why this guy still has a job. Like, I, I could go to DePaul and get last place every season. <laughs> Honestly, I mean. And you said it's his second stint there. Like, he was fired before or left before and then came back? Yeah, he was fired. I, I don't remember if he was fired or if he left, but – uh yeah, it was in the early mid two thousands. He was he was there for a couple seasons, uh, left. They they sucked again for a couple of years, and they brought him back, and and it's been no different. And I just well, I, I just don't understand why this guy still has a job. And kind of building off that, like DePaul, you know, back you know when I was growing up in like in the late eighties and nineties, they were like a powerhouse. Like, you know, I don't know about their history before then. I'm not very educated on the, the DePaul, but. They were a big part of that. They were a Big East team, right? Originally, yeah. yeah like, yeah. and you know, I can't think of anybody great that went to DePaul, but I thought they were always a tournament team. Uh, maybe a couple of Final Fours. So I wonder what's preventing them. You know, I feel like they have the resources being in Chicago. Like that's a big area. There should be have a powerhouse. You know, not a powerhouse. I'm sorry, but like the resources to recruit and to coach well to be, you know, a figure in the top tier of the Big East now. Yeah, they had Rod Strickland. That's probably the biggest name they had. Uh, but yeah, they went to a couple Final Fours back in the 80s. But Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, okay, Dave, Dave Lito left to become the coach of Virginia. That's why he left the first time. Oh, I see. Well, that obviously didn't you know work out. So, yeah. Well, I guess it worked out for Virginia in the long run. Yeah. Old T. Bennett. Who are, Dave Lito, who else you got? So, I got Bruce Weber, Kansas State. Oh, that is a surprising one to me. And yeah, mostly for the fact that the last two seasons, yeah, I mean, he's coming in, he's, he's either at the bottom or near the bottom of the Big 12. And you know, the one season he made the, the Elite Eight, I mean, he was a, they were a nine seed. So it's not like they were they were a powerhouse that season. They just they just happened to get lucky and play us and be sucked that game, you know. And, 
Uh, you take away that season, I mean, it's probably been five, six years since he's done anything. Really? Well, yeah, I mean, it's funny because we were talking about Michael Beasley before we got on. Was he the coach when Michael Beasley was there? No, no, that was Frank Martin. Frank Martin, that's who it was before. I forgot about Frank Martin, yeah. honestly. Um, yeah. Um, actually, I don't know. It was either Frank Martin or Bob Huggins. Oh, yeah, that's right, because Bob Huggins was there for that one year before he dipped out to West Virginia. State. No, it was Bob Huggins. It yeah, was Bob, okay. Yeah. But still, I mean, uh, yeah, he just hasn't done anything. I, I mean, even when he was in Illinois, he had that one great year. That was Bill Self's then, team. Yeah, it was Bill Self's team. And then after that, it was just downhill every year until he left. So, Who's next on your list? Let's see if you, any of ours overlap here. Next on my list is Jim Christian at Boston College. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, he's honestly kind of a carbon copy of Dave Leto. I mean, yeah. same thing. He hasn't done anything. Um, after that, I have Josh Pastner, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, yeah, I could see that. Especially with his, you know, all this investigation stuff going on with him, too. Because he's part of that, isn't he? I think he's got some ties with the – you know, illegal benefits for players or something. It's, yeah, it's one of those situations where he was like, it happened, but I didn't know about it. That's right. Well, you were still the coach. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, he, he's got a responsibility. To well, that's that. how Rick Pitino got away with it the first time, the first few times. Well, I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it, you know, with the stripper scandal and all that stuff. Well, you know, that's how Sean Miller is getting away with it right now. Honestly, yeah. Like, I mean, they have audio of – uh is it Chuck Person? It was Chuck Person, right? That was like Chuck Person was Auburn. Yeah, with well, these guys facilitating these deals. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and paying players—that's a topic for another show because I can go on and on about that. You got anybody else right. on that list? Oh yeah, um, don't have to go too far into it, but I've got Steve Prom at Iowa State. Yeah. Um, I mean, good lord, look at the year they're having. Yeah, they're a winless <laughs> in the Big Twelve. One win. Two in the, wins. Yeah. Uh, I got Rick Pitino in Minnesota. Um, it looked like he was saving his job earlier this season, but they've lost, like, what, eight in a row now? Yeah, Seven they, in a row? they have not won outside of the barn. So, like, no, yeah. I don't think they have a road win in Big Ten play. And then the last one I had was Patrick Ewing at Georgetown. Ooh, interesting. And uh, that one I was a little bit iffy on. I, I just – I don't know if Georgetown would have the balls to fire Patrick Ewing. Right, and I, and I feel like last year, I mean, he had a good – those. who did he just get? He just got a top 10 recruit or top 20 recruit um, that could turn around the program. Well, didn't one of the McClung? Mac, Mac, McClung? Mac, Mac McClung went to Texas Tech. They had like three players transfer out of the, out of the program last year. Um, and definitely, you know, that's cause for some concern, but – I don't know how long he's been there. Three years. Uh, yeah, this is his fourth year. Fourth year, so yeah. Well, he's been well. I kind of. Yeah, I just don't. I. I mean, I'll. I'll touch base. You know, speak more of this. I don't like the idea of hiring a coach and then after four years making a change because that doesn't show any kind of stability within your program. What coach is want to come? Going to want to come to your program, and if they don't flip the switch immediately or within four years, this you know, let's go ahead and fire him. Like coaches want that stability. They want to, you know, hopefully this be their last spot. If it's a power five program or a respected program. So. Right. But I mean, you're at Georgetown. I mean, I mean, Georgetown is kind of an established brand. Yeah, that's true. And you know, four years, I, I feel like in four years, you should be able to take Georgetown to better than a 19 and 12 record. I mean, that's just – that's his best record he's had. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. And, you know, I – I don't know. I, I was a little bit iffy on putting it on that list just because if Georgetown fired Patrick Ewing, that'd be <laughs> – That'd be like Georgetown firing John John Thompson, the old original one. Like, that was, you know, old JT, big JT was it. Like, Right. They fired his son. Well, yeah. After he – was it after you got lost to Florida, Florida Gulf Coast? Uh, it was one of those. No. It was close, yeah, close they, to that. They were a two seed that year. They, yeah. I, I can't remember, but he, he didn't do good for a couple of years. Yeah, they kind of gave him the boot. 
Um, now he's an analyst or he's assistant coach somewhere anyways. Well, I'm kind of excited that none of none of ours kind of uh, lined up and went for Hart's hot seat. So. Well, I have one more. Oh, what's that? That's Archie Miller. Yeah, we, okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, he's definitely yeah. on my list. Um, he's going to be the one I kind of finish my list on. I have Mike Bray at Notre yeah. Dame on mine. Um, he's been freaking at Notre Dame for 21 years, so let's give him props for that. And I, I well, never – that freaking Notre Dame-Kentucky – was it Elite Eight game the year they yeah. were undefeated? That game was incredible. Like, yeah, that, that was one of the best games I've ever watched. Yeah, and, you know – and I well, think the, go the reason I didn't put him on there is because he he he's done good every just about every year he's there. And you know we talked about this a little bit earlier. That I think this year is kind of a mulligan for some coaches. And this is probably his mulligan. Right. Now, if this continues next year, then you know obviously that's a different story. But right. and and like you have to look at his history here. I mean. In 2012, 2013, they were 25 and 10. 2013, 2014, 15 and 17. Like had a bad year. The freaking next year, they're 32 and 6, 14 and 4, and they lose to Kentucky and undefeated Kentucky in the Elite Eight. Like, right, like right. that's a bad. And the next year, boom, back into the Elite Eight. So, and last year he might have made the tournament. They were 20 and 12, you know, 10 and 10 in, in the ACC before postseason got postponed. But the year before they were three and fifteen in the but there's but I, I can see I can see the improvement, the the building is what I'm talking about. Like if, if it was consistently three and fifteen, four and eleven, you know, whatever, like, you know, I, I can't remember they play eighteen game seasons, I'm not sure. Um, you know, just a super bad, like two or three wins in the ACC a year, yeah, I get rid of him. But he's a proven winner. He's shown that I mean, every the only times he's never made the postseason was the three five, 15 year last year. And then his 2013, 2014 year. So I think they should give him a little bit benefit of the doubt. You know, let him, like I said, mulligan year, let him see what he can do next year with the talent he's got. Um, I have Steve Wojciechowski from Marquette kind of on my hot seat list. Um, okay. I think this year, you know, if he doesn't have Marcus Howard this year to carry him anymore, he lost the Hauser brothers. Like, why would. How did he lose Joey and Sam Hauser? Like, that's just bonkers to me. They were up and coming. They were good. Um, right. And, you know, they started off the season great with that Wisconsin win. Um, and and then just haven't done anything since. Uh, I think. To be honest, he hasn't done much of anything. I mean. Yeah. I was, your, his best season is 24 and 10. Right, and it's so, not – I mean, if Tom Crean can go to the Final Four with Marquette, like, let's be real. Like, you should be able to do something. I mean – I mean, Buzz Williams took him to the Elite Eight, so – Yeah, right. I, so, I think he, you know, is kind of, you know – I don't think they, – they wouldn't have made the tournament last year. They're 8-10 and 10 in the Big big E, so it's like – I don't think right. that, that would cut it. So, there's two years where, you know, you're having a – I mean, you're in the – Right next to Mad like Madison, like Wisconsin's a fucking breeding ground for these big, great German American players that just terrorize the Big Ten. So I don't know why he couldn't just recruit that. It's just and there's a theme with uh, there's a theme with my next one too. Chris Collins in Northwestern. Um, yeah, I thought about him too. Uh, you know these these Duke, my Coach K. You know protégés aren't really doing well i mean you got jeff capel over at pitt which you know time will tell on that and then you've got you know steve steve woge over at i can't ever pronounce his last name wojowski wojowski whatever at uh wojo Wojo, yeah at marquette and you got chris collins at northwestern and northwestern is tough to win at i mean i get it like but we also had John, yeah, Johnny Dawkins too. Yeah, that freak. He was at Stanford forever, and then you know he went over to UAB. Had a he had Taco Fall that year at UAB. Um, that they you know almost put Duke out of the tournament. That was that was a good game too. Um, uh, I have a, I have, and so I'm just curious to see what if Northwestern will pull the trigger on Chris Collins. Like I don't know, you know, if they did, you know, 
four straight losing seasons. So. Yeah, and he made the turn. I mean, he took them into their first tournament ever, so you got to give him props for that. But obviously, what he's doing now is not working. Um, and then I have this is going to be uh, an interesting one. I think I, I just put it on just to kind of spark some topic. I have Penny Hardaway. Yeah. Um, I don't. There. I don't think there are any rumblings. I don't think he, that anything will happen. But I think, I think it's one of those experiments that, yeah, he can recruit super well. Don't get me wrong, but can he coach? Because uh, I mean, well, I said it when they hired him. I said, you know, they, they gave him a preseason number one ranking. I'm, I'm like, yeah. You see how this goes with Kentucky every year. Just because you have a number one class doesn't mean anything. And I was like, if it works out for him, great. But usually these those things don't work out. I mean, it's just it and just like doesn't. you know they had James Wiseman. He got declared academic academically ineligible. You know for whatever. And then he got a great class with Precious Nunwa and a couple other guys. I think one of the guys was between going to go to IU, but he chose Memphis instead. But yeah, they're eleven and three, but they're in the AAC. Like who is Houston, Memphis, Wichita State? You know who's in the AAC? Is my only like out of conference though. Like who have they? Who have they played? Have they beat anybody this year? Have they beat anybody? Period. Since Cal was there, I just don't. Uh, yeah, their best non-conference is <laughs> St. Mary's. Right. Yeah. So I'm saying there's not. To be fair, though. I guess Western Kentucky's doing good this year. But we'll talk about them later. But yeah, I have them one of my dark horses. Um, Tulsa. Like even West. last year, they only beat Tennessee. Was only you know quad one win they probably had. I mean, I'm sure yeah, that's they, from quad one, but that was a ranked team at that time. They play Houston on Sunday, so I mean, I guess we'll see them. Yeah, I guess that's going to be a good barometer on you know if they're legit or not. Because you know if they beat Houston, shoot, yeah, they're in the tournament. Whatever, that's that's great. Yeah, I mean they lost to Western Kentucky. That's not a bad loss. No, not at all. They lost. They lost to VCU. That's not a bad loss. Lost to Auburn, which we lost to Auburn, so that's not a terrible loss. But yeah, I don't know. Tulsa's two losses. That's not good. But you know SMU. I mean, even SMU is eleven to four. So, yeah, I, I just, don't know. I, I, it's interesting. I, I feel and, like the AAC is just very top heavy. Like the bottom teams are very, very bad. Like everybody that's a bottom team, the AAC is like a Nebraska. They're just bad. <laughs> yeah. When have you ever heard Tulane, East Carolina, making noise? Right. Well, East Carolina did beat stuff. Houston. I mean, there's that. Yeah, true. But even a blind squirrel finds a nut. Um. And then yes, last on my list, I have Archie. I had uh, I had Shaka Smart with question marks. Yeah, well, he saved his whole damn season though. If he would have had another bad year, yeah, Shaka would have been fired. I could see that one hundred percent. But he's actually doing, you know, Texas. Is I'm gonna say good. I'm gonna say now he he is an all time disappointment. Yeah, he yeah. Yeah, uh, I I I thought he was gonna go to Texas. I was like that that's national championship in four years. Yeah, and then yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah, Archie, man, I'm I'm torn on this. Honestly, I can see both sides, and you know, I've been I've been holding my tongue on Twitter <laughs> because I don't. First of all, I don't like arguing with old timey IU fans because they only care about what Robert yeah. Montgomery Knight did, and I don't. I give two shits about what a player has connection, what a coach has connection to him. Forget about him. That was freaking. 20, 21 years ago, 22 years ago. Um, and, you know, I love Bobby Knight. I don't really condone everything that he did. And, you know, it was, you know, the way he treated his players. But, you know, he did win. I mean, but. Well, it makes you think about Mike Davis in hindsight. Like, yeah, and he's a bad. Right, yeah. And his son is lighting it up, which I have. We can talk about that later. Um, but with Archie. I can see we have we've had a big losing record in the Big Ten for four years. We haven't beaten Purdue in four years, which is unacceptable. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, have not beaten Purdue under Archie. We play them on Saturday, um, and that's you know if if our postseason hopes weren't dashed Tuesday night, they're dashed 
if we lose to Purdue, unless we make a Big Ten tournament run, whatever. Um, but I see, I see the progression that he's making with his players. Like Armand from last year to this year has increased his points per game by nine points a game. Of course, he's playing more minutes because Devontae Green's not playing. Trace has gone up six points per game. Race Thompson's gone up uh, five or six points a game. The progression is there. Everybody complains about his offensive schemes. I think his offensive schemes are great. I think it's a lot of uh, players just not re- executing right. Or they get so... Fund- s- fundamentals. Right, and they get so flustered within the, the aspect of the game that they forget. Like, you can constantly hear him, like, telling people, like, move. Like, this is what you're supposed to do. And honestly, our, like, I think I saw on out-of-bounds set plays, our, I use score, scores of, like... I don't know, 1.7 points for every possession, for every out-of-bounds play. Like, lobs to TJD, whatever you want. And that's when it kind of comes back to me, like, what are you establishing at IU if you fire a coach within four years? I mean, yeah, we're not we're not the IU that was mid-'80s IU, that was early-'90s IU, that was '70s IU. That's not – no. With the, with the parody in college sports today – and the exposure that every player gets, they can go wherever they want. So, and he's gotten the recruits. Christian Lander's going to be great. He's already progressed a lot this season. I think all the freshmen are going to be great next season. Uh, I don't think Trace goes pro. I don't. He's a fit, like a fiftieth overall prospect this year. Like, why would you go pro? Like, work on the jumper more because he has no outside shot. He can't shoot it past fifteen feet. I mean, it's absolute garbage. I think he's attempted like seven this year and not his single one. Um, he hit one last year. Uh, <laughs> And I feel like, and within the offensive schemes, like the the shots are there, they just can't hit them. Like they're good looks. So if he puts a prior, you know, pro, you know, prioritizes more shooters, which is what he did last year, and then we have uh, Logan Duncan coming this year, and a couple other guys, uh, C.J. Gunn just committed to us, but he'll be the year after next, I think. And we would have made the tournament last year. And I think that would have put all, everything at rest. But the fact that. IU fans have not seen IU in the tournament since Archie's been there is, you know, rubbing people the wrong way. But I, I would say, like we talked about, this is a, this is a mulligan. This year's a mulligan. Like the freshmen missed out on six to seven games where they could have developed against lesser opponents. And in, instead we're thrusted right into, like, like we played Tennessee tech and then boom, Providence, boom, Texas, boom, Stanford. Like there was no red, yeah. like no, no easing into it. And I think, I think Kentucky can kind of say, kind of have the same kind of explanation for not allowing the freshmen to find their feet and figure out what the flow is of, you know, b- big time college basketball. Yeah. So that's, yeah. I, I don't think they fire Archie because <laughs> I don't know who they would hire, honestly. And that's been my, you know, they're like asking, like, what were the questions? You know, why don't you think we fire Archie? And I said, who's available? Who would you hire? And, like, is it any going to be anybody better? Are you willing to reset all over again and bring in a new coach with different fundamentals and then just lose for the next two years? Or do you give Archie another shot, he fix, fine-tune some things, and IU makes the tournament next year, hopefully. And then, you know, and I think once Archie gets into a tournament, I think that's where his magic shows with those Dayton runs. Like, I think he's a good coach within the tournament. But that's my rant yeah. on Archie. Yeah. That's just, I could see both cool. sides of it, honestly, man. Like... And it's frustrating because I mean, Archie was my guy. That's who I wanted. You only, you guys have only had one really bad loss this year. That's Northwestern. Yeah. So it's it's not like you're out here losing to you know the Nebraska's of the world. Yeah. It's just it's it's a weird season for everybody. I mean, I, I <laughs> you look at Kentucky. I mean, Jesus, we started out. We beat Morehead State by. 36 points, and I was like, oh, okay, this might be a good year. Then we lost seven in a row, six in a row. Oh, my goodness, I didn't realize that many. And, yeah, we lost to Richmond, Kansas, Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, North Carolina, and Louisville. Oof. And, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's it's not been a good season all around for, for a lot of a lot of blue, bud, blue bloods. Yeah, and I think that's um, you know we can transition in because like none of the blue bloods are doing good. Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky. I will say Mick Cronin's actually surprised me a little bit with UCLA. Um, I kind of thought he was going to go there and die, like just fade into oblivion. 
but there's still there's still time. Yeah, I mean, look, Steve Alford had a good couple of years there, and then so I I think it just they didn't get the hopefully next season you know things calm down everybody you know COVID kind of fades off into you know a terrible memory and we can kind of get back to the normalcy of things I think that's when you know we can see the actual growth of these players you know, get another off season, a normal seat off season under their belts like a normal preseason like of practice and everything like that um and you know yeah, we, I think we can, I, I think that's been the biggest issue for a lot of these especially Duke and Kentucky you know they're so freshman reliant that you know they didn't have right at that time uh, and I mean, the, yeah you know and it's just it's if it's gonna and that's why we can transition now that's why I think the, the, this is why the Gonzagas and the Baylors and the you know older teams of the world are doing so well this year um and the, you know they're gonna be making noise in the tournament I think it's going to be a very odd you know some teams that we don't normally see in the elite eight to the final four uh from years well, past because it's you know i'll tell you right now I, I would never have guessed michigan to be as good as they were you're telling me dude i i don't know where the article is but they were picked to fish like eighth or ninth in the big 10 i think so around that range and yeah and i and i would put them like you got gonzaga and baylor in one a i put michigan in one b yeah 100 percent Especially now, that that Illinois loss was a little. Oof. Yeah, Illinois loss. I don't was know so what bad. happened there, but yeah. me either. Um, I think now here's, you know, I have this in my notes here. Is this the Gonzaga? This is the best Gonzaga team that's ever that he's ever had. I think because he's finally he's finally mixed like that. You know, old you know whatever Mark Few does out there, whatever he puts in the water with his older players that just come from overseas or whatever, but now he has a top legitimate one and done talent in Jalen Suggs. And he's finally like meshed it all together. Um, I don't yeah, have, he's got, he, he's got that. We play in a bad conference water. So. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Put them in the, that's what we talked about the other night too. Put them in the pack 12, see what happens. Mark, few step up, but then they, they don't have a football program, like you said. So it'll never, it'll never be a thing. Um, and I think, I don't think that they're, you know, I have in my notes, they're not as good as the 2014, 2015 Kentucky team. They're not as good no, as no. the 75, you know, 75 Hoosiers. They're not as good as, I don't even think they're as good as the Wichita State team that lost to Kentucky in the second round. Yeah, like, I was just about to say that. Yeah. You know, and until, until Gonzaga proves all of us wrong and freaking runs the table and goes undefeated or wins a national championship, like, they're still going to be. That one time Adam Adam Morrison cried on the court to me. Honestly, like <laughs> <laughs> I'll never ever let them live. You know that's Gonzaga to me. Honestly, blowing leads and Adam Morrison crying on the court. I still um, go back and uh, watch that clip every now and then. Oh yeah, dude, it's in my March Madness like playlist. Um, well, I mean, here's the thing: their, their 2017 team made the the national championship game. Yeah, They're, they won't even be as good as that team if they don't go that far. Yeah. So. Any Pacers fans yeah. that had DeMontis Sabonis on it? Let's go. That team was so good. Um, so let's move on. Who do, now? This con, who are your surprise dark horse teams of the tournament? So I have I have a couple written down here. I have Alabama. Uh, not really a dark horse, but you know nobody's talking about them, and. I don't think really anybody expected Alabama to be as good as they were this year. Yeah. And if you if you watch them play, they are they are very good. They're very good from mid or close range two point, and they are extremely good at three point shots. Um, and I, you know, I read an article the other day about their practices. They uh they they do scrimmages where they score their points based on where they shoot the ball. Huh. And they have, um, I think their close range shots are two points. Their mid range shots are only worth one point, and then three points are three, and then they have a four point shot as well. So that kind of discourages them from taking those long two range shots. The shot that I hate the fucking most. Oh, sorry, I had to get that well, out there. You, you should you should watch a Kentucky game because that <laughs> is all they shoot. Just mid range jumpers. Take a step back, it, shoot the three. It is the most frustrating thing in the world. God dang, dude! I 
if only mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm going to branch off on a tangent here. If only I was 10 years older, I guess, because back in, you know, we talked about, like, I've always known, like, Reggie Miller was my all-time favorite. Like, shoot a three-pointer. Why are you taking a long two? Like, shoot the three-pointer, you get an extra point. Then Steph Curry just, ma- the Warriors magically figured it out and changed the NBA forever or whatever. But anyways. Well, you know, that, that was Rick Pitino's big thing. He was a Ducky coach. You, you know, you, you shoot the three, you shoot it down low. You don't shoot mid-range shots. I, I think really that's kind of where it started and, and you just kind of propagated out from right. there. Right. So, I don't want to. I don't want Kentucky to take credit for being revolutionary. <laughs> um, so, anyways, so Alabama okay. that was my first one. My second one was Western Kentucky. I like that um, pick. I like that pick a lot. I I see them getting in as like a 12, 13 seed and, and probably making the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, I could see it because um, they'll end up playing a team like Virginia, and. I could I could see that turning into another UMBC massacre. Um, you know they have a they have a very good defense. They have an excellent center in Charles Basie. Dude, I love that guy. Yeah, yeah, he he's one of the best centers in Conference USA, if not the best. Um, and they're an excellent rebounding team as well. So you know, who's a coach there? At Western Rick Stansberry. Is it Stansberry still at Western Kentucky? Uh, no. Uh, that's a good question. I probably can't should know that. The old Bowling Green, Kentucky. The Hilltoppers. Yeah, yeah, it is Rick Sandberg. Okay, okay. I couldn't remember if it was or not. Yeah, I could see that. That's a good pick. That I like that pick a lot. Uh, what else you got? Who is on a dark? Yeah, any more dark horses? Yeah, I got Oklahoma State. Yeah, that's a good one. Cade, um, Cade Cunningham. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Well, that's that was what I had. I said Cade Cunningham carry. Yeah, he's that, that's you know he could turn into another Kimball Walker and, and that's all, to a final. Yeah, game. and that's all I, I saw on ESPN. I think that they were already saying you know comparing like can Ken, Cade Cunningham do a Kimba like and honestly yeah he can like he's the number one pick for he's going to be the number one pick for a reason. Yeah, and then I have I have two more, but I'm going to kind of lump them together as one. I have Drake and Loyola. Oh, so the Missouri Valley team. Yeah, and, you know, mostly because how many Missouri Valley teams have we seen come into the tournament and just make a run? Yeah. And we saw right. Loyola do it two, three years ago. Yeah, exactly. You know, all the way to the Final uh, Four. And then, you know, Drake's had some great – I never forget that Drake-Western Kentucky game where Western Kentucky won on – it was like 08, I think, and Western Kentucky won on a long three. But yeah. my only concern with Drake is – is that they had a huge long pause because of COVID and they hadn't really played anybody before then. That's why they were like 14 and 0 or whatever. Um, right. And then as soon as they resumed, they finally got to the tough part of their schedule, played Loyola twice. Uh, I think they played Indiana state because Indiana state actually came on strong there and they won like nine straight, I think, which is pretty good for them considering I hate Greg Lansing. Um, he's getting fired. Well, they're not fired. They're mutually parting ways. Uh, thank gosh. So I, I, that's my only concern with Drake. I don't. I think Loyola wins well, that. They uh, well, they they split the season series. With oh, oh, did they? I thought they, okay. I thought they lost both of them. Um, but they did just lose the other day to Bradley. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, and Porter Moser, yeah. may, 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 hey, if if IU fires Archie, sure, call it Porter Moser. Bring him on down. I guess I don't know. Yeah, but and that's yeah. They, uh, they did also lose their starting point guard. So oh. for the season. Oh, ouch. Yeah, that's no good. I think, too, uh, Nate Oates at Alabama is some guy that I would want IU to snipe away from <laughs> Alabama. That, honestly, that, that that probably would be uh, your, your best option. Yeah, that's what that's, I still want Dane Altman, but I'm, that Nike money's never taken him. He's never leaving Oregon. Really? You want Dane Altman? Yeah, I, I love Dane Altman, dude. All right. I wanted him when they when they were poaching, you know, searching for, Ar- you know, after Tom Crean let go. I, my top two choices were Archie Miller or Dana Altman. Okay, all right, I'll let you have it. Yeah, he's just been good out there, honestly. Like he's been consistently good. I don't know what they are this year, but. Uh, so what about you, dark horses? My dark horses, I have I have Loyola Chicago as well. I think they're going to come out of the Missouri Valley and and kind of make some noise uh i have purdue as one of my dark horses okay um this is the worst purdue team we've seen in a couple years but they're i think that 
with Travion Williams down low and just the outside shooting that they had with Stevanovich and uh, a couple. I forget the other point guard's name, but they they just light it up, dude. Like uh, as a freshman, uh, what's his Jay Nivey? Sorry. Uh, I just think they have the. And Travion's just so big down low that he's just gonna, he can dominate any matchup that he's with. He's quick enough. He dominates Trace every time Trace plays against him. Like, it's not even funny. So I can see them being an Elite Eight team, honestly. I don't think they'll be a Final Four team or anything, but I think they'll make some noise as, like, a four or five seed whenever they do get in. Um, and I think the another Dark Horse team that's not really the Dark Horse is Michigan State. I think if they get into the tournament – okay. They're going to be in as a – depending on how this Michigan game goes. If they win this Michigan game, I think they're in as a, as a 10 seed. And I think uh, – Well, they're losing right now, but – And even so, I think they still get in as a 12, depending on how Big Ten tournament goes. Um, but I think that's a 12 seed I wouldn't want to see as a 5-12 matchup. I mean, if they win their first four game, because I think that's where they have them now ranked as a in the first four – or an 11. I agree that they'll uh, they'll get in, but I think they'll get in because they are Michigan, Michigan State. State. Uh, I mean, okay, I, I, that's a little bit of, that's a little bit of a hot take. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't necessarily agree with you on that, but that's fine. You don't have to, but I just think Aaron Henry's been playing. You know, they went they beat IU first at home, and then they went and beat Illinois, and then they beat Ohio State, I think, or somebody else. And yeah. I think Aaron Henry has that within him that he can carry a team and they have just enough supporting cast with rocket watts and greg brown and um i forget the other guy's name it's he can really shoot it too like they just have enough shooting i think that they could do it um and i and i don't know if it's really let me just bring it up here that much of a, a black horse uh you know a dark horse team but i really do think that um Yeah, I like the Western Kentucky pick. I think Oklahoma, honestly. I think Oklahoma could be really, really good. Uh, and, and you see, and there's a, they haven't predicted it as a five seed right now. And so, you know, not really a dark horse, but Lon Kruger, I don't I don't get it. Like, Yeah. They were not supposed to be co- good. Where's he coach now? Illinois, Florida, Illinois, Oklahoma. Florida, Arizona. Was he at Arizona? Uh, I felt, I felt yeah, like he was at – I feel like he was he, at Utah, wasn't he? I think so. Um, Let's see here. Kansas State. Forgot all about that. Florida. Illinois. UNLV and Oklahoma. The UNLV. Yeah, I just think. He's he's been in Oklahoma the longest. And he's always won. Like, he's a winner everywhere he goes. Like, Well, he took Florida to their first Final Four. Yeah, that's. And so I think they're kind of. You know, as of right now, they haven't played in Western Kentucky in the first round, which would be a interesting matchup. Mm-hmm. That'd be two dark horses against each other. But I think that's about the extent of mine. I mean, I I don't see Wisconsin do anything in the tournament. I don't see North Carolina do anything. Houston will probably be an Elite Eight team and be done. Yeah, I I, I just I have trouble trusting Big Twelve teams. Yeah, same here. I mean, it seems like every year it's like. You have two or three teams that are really good, and then they fizzle out. Even Kansas, I mean, yeah, top five every year. I, I mean, I guess you could say the same thing for Kentucky as well. But you know, they're top five every year. And how many national championships have they won? Right. You know what? They have They haven't won one since Cal. Uh, oh wait. Oh wait. Yeah, Marcus. Uh, that was uh, Mario Chalmers. Mario Chalmers. That was it. Um. We can just briefly touch transition into, you know, speaking of a tournament team, Creighton, with these recent comments that Greg McDermott made. I just. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that is a level of self-awareness that you just I don't understand I, how people don't have. Yeah. And I and, and for anybody that's watching that doesn't doesn't know, you know, I guess in, in a post game, it was post game, I believe, or halftime, Greg McDermott said, you know, to his to his players that we need everybody here on the plantation. You know, we need to keep everybody on the plantation, like referencing that as like a a motivational factor. 
Um, and I just don't, I just think the, like you said, the self-awareness there. And like, why is that the first thing that came to his mind? Like, keep everybody on the ship. I don't know. Make it a boat reference. <laughs> don't make it literally, a freaking. Anything else, literally. <laughs> anything else uh, would have been perfect. I read an article earlier where he, I, it sounded like a puff piece to me. But it was like, yeah, I talked to my players and they said I should stay on as coach because I offered to resign. I'm like, what? What? First off, why would you? Who cares? Don't tell people that. Right. And second like, off, I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like address it, educate yourself, move on. I don't think, I don't think it's on the same level as what Greg Greg Marshall was doing at to his players at Wichita State by any means. Oh or, God, no. That. that, that, that. <laughs> yeah. The stories I heard about him and his wife. Oh, his wife is the worst. I know this yeah, is a tangent, but she the absolute worst she hated jeff goodman uh she got kicked out of a tournament game yeah against kentucky it was that one she, she was drunk <sighs> uh, i think next week we can do more of a like a mock uh mock tournament because we'll have more auto qualifiers in by now and that because i think that's the tough part is like we don't know who's going to win these little ter- conference tournaments anything can happen um so i think we can put that on the docket for next week kind of just i'll bring up like, yeah i'll put on uh you know, kind of like a, we can put it in an Excel doc and kind of fill in what we want to do. Right. Um, you want to transition into some baseball? Let's do it. All right, lead us off, Travis. We want so, to talk about. Let's talk about our uh, our predictions first. That way we can kind of go into talk about uh, you know our, our our separate you know teams. Right. So, I've got the Yankees, the Braves, the White Sox, the Cardinals, the A's, and the Padres all winning their division. Well, I can see that, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I didn't pick the Dodgers. I know that's probably a Whew. bit of a risky pick, but, uh, yeah. I, I, I know you're a big White Sox fan. Yeah. It's going to be a tough, tough division as well because, you know, the Twins are – coming up too so well on the twin and i have mine was all the same mine was the exact same except i had the dodgers winning their division um and the only thing i'm worried about within the al central is the twins or are the twins but they're chokers dude they're they're high key chokers like they get they, well, they you, play the wild card game they they lose they don't do anything you still got the Indians as well. I mean, well, Indians are kind of in a rebuild, so I'm not too worried about them right now since they just traded Liriano away. That's true. Yeah. I tell you, a team to watch out for is the Blue Jays. Um, yeah. I, I, that was actually the hardest division for me to – The Yankees. Because I ranked them all, too, from one to five. I had the Blue Jays coming in third. Ray second? Ray second. Yeah, that's that's um, way I would – I could – you could inter-swap any three of those, honestly, I think. Yeah. I think with the White Sox finally getting a, back to them, back their bullpen just being so freaking good this year with Gio being our ace, Lance Lynn, Liam Hendricks coming into close. Uh, we got uh, Keuchel still. We have uh, Michael Kopech coming back. Uh, there's just I think our bullpen's just going to be nasty. I don't think it's you know I like I said you know pre-show I don't think. They're an ALCS team. I don't think they're a World World Series team. Uh, I think they're ALDS. I think it'll be a close series. If they get to the ALCS, I'll be happy. And I think that, you know... That... Who, who do you think is going to come out of the American League? Because I, I disagree. I actually think you guys have a very legitimate shot. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not putting much freaking stock in. The, the inexperience is what I'm going to be. You know, working on. Honestly, I could see. I think it'll be the Yankees or the blue the the Blue Jays. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be anybody. I don't think it's any anybody in the West. I don't think it's going to be. I'm just really scared of this Blue Jays team. Maybe I'm maybe I'm eating the hype. I don't know. Maybe I'm eating the hype. But oh, George, no, I mean they're they're a good team. The uh, George they, Springer. They did, yeah, they did a lot better last year than people thought. And... 
What about your NL? Uh, what about your NL, NL stuff, Mister Braves fan? So the Braves, I, I, it, it's between the Braves and the Mets right now because the Mets spent a lot of money the off season to, to to beef themselves up and and honestly, it, you know, I can see the Mets getting you know winning the division, but look at the Braves, man. Last three years, they they, yeah. they three straight division titles. They still have Ronald Acuna. They still have Ozzy Albies, Freddie Freeman. We 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 brought back Azuna. We brought in Charlie Morton and Drew Smiley. So, you know, with those reinforcements to the rotation, that offense, the young core. I mean, that honestly, it wasn't for the the freaking Dodgers and Padres. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's a pretty big roadblock, though, with the Padres and the Dodgers. Uh, yeah. I, Saw how it was last year. We were up three one in the uh, NLCS. Yeah, choked it away. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, you know, that could be four years in a row of us doing that. I think it would be awesome NLCS Padres versus the Braves. That would be a that'd be a fun show with Acuna out there. Oh, I love that. <laughs> the reason I I picked the Padres is like they're a lot younger, and they're they're set up to be more successful for. For a long time, more years yeah. than the Dodgers are. Dodgers are kind of going all in this year. You know, they signed Trevor Bauer, so yeah, you know, they're they're all in on repeating, which they could. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put my faith in Padres and you know the uh, the backflip of Fernando Tatis. <laughs> now that'd be a fun World Series, White Sox versus the Padres. That would be a blast. Yeah, that'd be just yeah. a freaking run show. Um, I'm happy to hear that the Cubs are rebuilding and they're going to be trash this year. All these Cubs fans, <laughs> all these Cubs fans can just dwindle away. That came I out of the woodwork. Second. Oh God, I think the Reds and the Brewers. I I don't I don't see them. I see them being last, honestly. I think the Reds are better. Ooh. I think the Brewers are better. I think the Pirates are better. The Cardinals win really? the division. I think. Mm. Yeah, I don't. Know. Cardinals are always good, that. dude. I don't get it. God. <laughs> they're the Yankees of the National League. So. They are, yeah, I mean, that. I'd like to see here. That is a good comparison. The Cardinals are the Yankees of the National League. And I'm not speaking to diehard Cub fans. I'm not. I know that they they exist. I know I, I know several of them. No, uh, fuck the Cubs. They're awful. <laughs> but the worst you, team in, in baseball. After, like, 2016, like, they just poof. Like, even 2015 when they lost the Mets, uh, um, and the, I think it was NLCS, like, you know, that was, I mean, there's a great team. I just think the way that the Ricketts are hand, is the Ricketts still own the Cubs, whatever. whoever yeah. They, yeah. They're just handling this whole situation they, they poorly. They didn't handle their, they had a good core and it just kind of screwed the core away. I mean, that Schwarber and, uh, well, I mean, that hobby shit. You know, yeah, it, Cubs fans know who their core was, but I'm just saying they, they, they you know, they didn't handle that correctly. They, they, well, they I feel like if you've got that much talent together, there's no freaking salary cap in baseball. You're one of the most profitable teams in baseball. Pay the money and put them together. Like, yeah, and you're in Chicago, like it's right. Not like you're you're a small. Market. You're a huge market team. You're a huge popularity team. Like. People in freaking China probably wear Cubs gear. Like, I mean, you're just one of the more brandable franchises. So pay the well, freaking money. Yeah, they got that C too. You know, they probably think it stands for China. <laughs> That's very true. Um, and I just don't. I don't know what the next step is. You know, for the Cubs. You know, I don't know. Chris Bryant, yeah, I don't know Chris I mean, Bryant, just... and who's the first baseman with the can- had cancer? I can't remember. Anthony Rizzo, that's his name. I couldn't think of his Rizzo, name. Rizzo, yeah. Yeah, the Brizzo combo. Like, you got to build around those three. I think that that 2016 Cubs team was good. Um, was Starlin Castro on that team? I feel like Starlin Castro was on that team. I don't know. I just feel like they, everything kind of aligned for them. But yeah, yeah. well. Honestly, National League, it's it's the Padres, it's the Dodgers, it's the Braves. It's the Mets. And then yeah, then after that you got the Mets and the Cardinals. After that, I don't know who you got. I mean, it's kind of a cluster at the bottom. But you know, 
The Phillies, oh, Thanks, they're, they're awful. The Pirates, they're awful. The Diamondbacks and the Giants, they're not good. So, you know, you got the Nationals who could be good, but they, they seem to underwhelm every year. Um, Domestic abuser Addison Russell. Get it right. <laughs> They got the Reds, who they made the playoffs, but then didn't score a run in the postseason. Right. So. I feel like the Reds oh. are just. When was the last time the Reds were good when they had, uh, what's his name, Howard? Uh, Joey Votto. I did like I did like Joey Votto. What was the guy that played for the Phillies that played for the Reds originally? I can't remember his name. He was on the Subway commercials. Can't remember. Uh, Ron Howard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, I don't think, I don't think the White Sox are going to the World Series. I mean, I see, I see the point. I would like to see that. I just don't. I just think they're too young at this point in time. So, you know, I'll, I'll pick them to win the division. I'll pick them to win the wild card if they have to play in it. But I just think that AL East is just going to be too strong this year. Yeah, I got the Rays and the Braves. That's my World Series. That'd be a good one. And I've, you know, props to the Rays organization. Like, I don't know how they're. That, <laughs> how do they do good with that? Right, like payroll and nobody comes to watch their games. I like, I've, I've never seen a more depressing sight than the Rays playing in that freaking dome and nobody in the seats. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. and they're like a ninety-one team. It's like okay, everybody cares about Tom Brady now. I guess I don't know. And, sheesh. Um, and that's about, you know, it's still spring training. Oh, we were going to talk about spring training games and what our biggest pet peeve is currently. Well, my biggest pet peeve is freaking this BS where they, the I don't know if this is new. This is my first time really paying attention to spring training is call it, the managers can call the game, the innings. Like, I just think that drives me nuts. Like, why even, I know it's just like, you know, practice basically, like, you know, game practice, but. I was watching the Rangers White Sox spring training game the other day, and we had the bases loaded up three zero, and Jose Abreu was coming up to you know knock a Grammy, and uh, whatever the Rangers manager is like, nope, nope, calling it, calling it, and so we didn't even get a chance to see it. So I I get it, but I don't. I just kind of want to see baseball, honestly. That's my big beef with the spring training right now. Um, Lance Lynn pitched today. He did. All right, two innings, three Ks. I think is what I had wrote down for his stats. Um, but yeah, that's you know we'll keep talking about baseball. We like, I like that I have a team now that I can be interested in. You know, kind of before you know being in Indiana, it's tough. You know, you don't really it's either Cubs or Cardinals or Reds, honestly. So when I yeah. when I moved to Iowa, I was able to get all the White Sox games. So because I originally I was a really big fan of the Twins, but. I was like, I want something with them that I can watch every game of a team I can get behind, and so that's why. I that's why I was a, uh, a Braves fan because uh, Team Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. They always carried the Braves game, and you know, I I remember Tom Lavin, John Smoltz, Greg Maddox, watching those teams. So, and that's I don't. A, I, don't re- I usually don't talk about baseball very much with you guys, but yeah, I I do always I do follow Braves. Yeah, same here. Like, I try to watch. And I think, uh, you know, that branches onto my other point with MLB. They need to get their television rights figured out. How can you grow a brand when you don't allow anybody within the freaking 500-mile radius to watch a team that's in the, within their local market? Like, there's no reason why a Cubs fan living in Indiana shouldn't be – can't watch a Cubs game. Like, put it on local TV. Like, how are you going to grow your brand where you're limiting people watching the teams that they like? I don't – I don't – I'll never get that because, like, the NBA is complete opposite. Like – I mean, it's like, sure, yeah, watch whatever games you want. Um, yeah, I've never understood blackout rules. and Yeah. And NFL got rid of blackout rules, like, for the most I about, part. I was about to say, I'm so glad NFL got rid of it because who cares? Yeah, like, and I know, you know, I think a lot of it stems to, you know, I think the Angels, uh, they signed that, like, $900 million deal with NBC Sports out there or something for the broadcasting rights. Like, that's a well, ridiculous that. amount of money. But now you have to watch it. Yeah, that's what Kyle just put in the chat. Entire NL Central is blacked out for people in Indiana. Like, how is that beneficial? 
like your market this is your market like let them watch it understand that like i don't i don't understand that because indiana would be perfect for the national league central you got st louis and chicago exactly Cincinnati, indiana is literally in between them yeah and so and that nobody you can't watch it unless you have uh whatever fox sports or you know, you can't. If you were to get the MLB, whatever their package is to watch it, you those games would be blacked out. I'm like, what? I don't. I I'll never understand that. Um. And a little juicy point. Uh, do you hear this stuff about Albert Pujols being three years older than he actually is? I did. I saw that article earlier. I didn't read through it very much. But, yeah. Uh, so David Sampson dropped that bomb on Levitard show that everybody knew, like that he was you know, three years older than he actually was. And I think, I forget what article I was reading, but they actually went year by year and they're like, it actually fits, <laughs> which is why, you know, three years into his angels career, he just went, whew, just dropped. Like his OPS went from like 1.022 down to like set, like below set 0.7. Like, and it shows like that's an actual, like it would make sense if he was actually 38 years old instead of 35 or 44. Kyle put in the chat. The reasoning is they would lose revenue from us coming to the games. Oh, that's BS. Yeah, you're not driving that far for three games a week when it's like, you know, back to back to backs. Like, remember, Don Maker, he lied about his age, too. Yeah. Pools let it slip. Yeah, that's crazy, Kyle. I don't. Try to take where I got blow my nose. Yeah, so that would make him, what, 43, 44 now? And you know, he's he's not very far away from moving up the uh, the home run list to third. I don't know at this point now if he'll... Yeah, he's 41, so he's actually 44. Yeah. So that's, uh... <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a bit rough for a baseball player. Yeah, yeah. That old. And that's, you know, it's kind of crazy, too, like, the fact that he was able to get that deal out of the Angels when the Angels knew that he was, you know, everybody, Samson said everybody knew, but, you know, still put out that 10-year, $290 million, $250 million deal. It's props to him, man. Get your bag. Like, yeah, he's got it for sure. Um, let's talk a little NBA. I've been itching to get to these. I've been itching to get to this. Yeah. Um. Freaking, let's start off with uh, Boston Celtics. What do you do? You have, do you have a take on that? Yeah, that's probably the biggest disappointment in the NBA this year. I mean, eighteen seventeen, fourth place, okay, but you know they're two games out for being in tenth place. You know, with with Kimball Walker in that lineup, that they should easily be a top two or three seed. But, you know, I, I forget what game it was that I watched them play. They just, oh, it was the Pelicans where they, they blew that 24-point lead. I'm just, I watched them, and I'm like, what are they doing out there? It's like they just stopped caring and thought just because they had the lead, they were going to win. And, but I think you, know. you brought up a good point. Kimball Walker, I mean, I think that's that's the X factor for this team is he hasn't, when he's been healthy, yeah, he's been great. But he's not the Kimball Walker that he was when he was in Charlotte by any means. No. Uh, he's been dealing with I've I don't I think it's a knee injury. I can't remember. Something with his knee. And I think what what really hampers them is yeah, they got Jason Tatum, yeah, they got Jalen Brown, uh whatever big white guy they got in the center, whatever his name is. Daniel Tice, I think. Aaron Baines or whoever, I yeah, can't remember. Daniel Tice. I think it's the bench that's really sucking the most, honestly. Like uh, don't they? Marcus Smart. I mean, he hasn't been doing great this year. Uh, or Romeo. Well, that's the thing. Romeo like, too. yeah, Romeo hasn't done anything. hasn't done He hasn't even played this year in the NBA. He's been, you know, bitching. Well, you know, Tristan Thompson and Jeff Teague, who they really aren't doing anything. Right. Yeah, Jeff Teague's um, been awful this year. Awful. Yeah. Tremont Waters and yeah, Grant, Grant Williams, Williams who. Like yeah, he's scrappy, but he's and Robert not that Williams, good. I mean, Robert Williams has actually been pretty good. The kid from Texas Tech, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they have uh, 
They have Carson Edwards. Like, I think they should play Carson Edwards. That dude's a bucket. He's a walking bucket. Like, that dude can score on anybody. Yeah, he's short. Right. I think he'll he'll give you that effort. Um, oh, at this point, play Taco. Yeah, might as well. Shoot. I mean, yeah, he's a he, human victory cigar, but still, it's Taco <laughs> Fall. Like, he's 7'6". Like, he's... He's going to be, he's going to get, you know, do something. He's going to energize people. Like, they like, you know, I don't know. I'm curious to see how the second half of the season goes for them. If Kimba comes back healthy, yeah, I think they can still be, still be, you know, a top three seed in the East. Um, yeah, I, I've got them and Milwaukee as my biggest disappointments in the East. Ooh, Milwaukee. Even though, even though they're a three, four seed, but look, I mean, Milwaukee, they've won 60 plus games two years in a row. And I mean, they're, I mean, they're doing okay, but they're 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 still struggling. And you know, why are they struggling? They shouldn't be struggling. I'll say, I think is a Drew Holiday experiment not working. I haven't really been watching them very much. That's that's my best guess. I mean, I, I, I let's see. To be honest, Chris Middleton, you know, it's well. My personal opinion is you're never going to win an NBA championship with Chris Middleton being your second. I mean. He That's f- a fair point. He disappears in the playoffs. He he's not a. I mean, he, yeah, he can shoot. He's a three and D guy, but he's not athletic enough to dunk or, or beat people on the dribble. Like, so. Well, and yeah, I think Giannis just he just carries him a little bit too much. Oh, 100 percent. He's their leading points. Rebounds, assists, and blocks leader. Yeah, and, I saw that. Too. Yeah, like what in the world? And he's second in steals. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it, you can't just you can't put it all on Giannis. You know, it, right? He's got his sporting cast. Got to show. Doesn't work. Do they still? Do they still have Divincenzo. I don't forget who else they have. Um, Drew Holiday, Divincenzo. Bobby Portis and Brooke Lopez. Oh, I forgot about Brooke. See, I, I, I mean, I don't think they should have ever got rid of Eric Bledsoe, to be honest. They made that, well, they just didn't, they made that swap for Drew Holiday. I mean, they wanted more of a true point guard, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, uh, his assist to turnover ratio is 3.2, so it's, it's not bad, but. It's just not. It's not. He's not inspiring either. You know? Right. Yeah. If I had, if, if I had a pick, I would pick send Drew Holiday over to the Pacers so we can complete the Holiday trifecta. Because we already got Justin and Aaron. Why do we need Drew? Yeah. I, so th- those were those were my disappointments in the East. In the West, I had uh, Sacramento. They're, they're, I don't think they should be nearly as bad as they have been. No. And uh, and Denver. Yeah, what is up with Denver? I was wondering that too. I have them on my list. Uh, yeah, I mean between uh, between Murray and uh, you know, Jokic, what what's going on? Right. Uh, Michael, I got Michael Porter Jr. Who, I'll, I'll eco on that. I I, <laughs> I, I, I I thought he was going to be a bust, but he's but he's not been. He's been yeah, good. So he's actually been really good. <clears throat> um, so. I say I think I had Denver on my disappointments, and I'm, it's a good question about Sacramento. Like they have all the tools to succeed. Like Darren Fox is a stud. Um, I don't know how freaking uh, what's the kid from Duke? I think, Bagley. Yeah, I don't know how Marvin Bagley's doing, but we got Buddy Hile. I mean, yeah. Between between they have a good point guard, they have a good shooting guard. They got Bagley who. I mean, he's a decent enough center that plus I got Harrison Barnes. So yeah, you know, I'm not. I don't know. I don't understand why it's not all coming together. Maybe it's just their supporting cast is that poor. I say I know that Tyrese Halliburton won Rookie of the Week last week for for the out. They have Jabari Parker. Holy cow! Yeah, I just saw that. And Hassan Whiteside and Jahemus Ramsey. Holy cow! That I thought Jahemus Ramsey was. Oh, he's a rookie. He's the guy that. Kyle guy. <laughs> oh, freaking Kyle guy. Has he even played in the NBA games? Well, he doesn't have a salary, so. 
I say for my I for my disappointment I didn't really have any disappointments honestly. I just I think the Wizards are a disappointment, but I think that's all that's contingent really on good. Russell Westbrook's freaking his athleticism's just falling off a cliff and we all we all everybody knew it was going to happen. Like that's what his whole game was predicated on. Right. Like, was, you know, has athleticism and the fact that he can't do what he used to do as well anymore. You know, it's just I'll tell you who we need to be talking about is the Knicks. Dude, the Knicks are on my list right here. What in I the mean, world? That that that's gonna be a team to watch out for in the next couple of years. Between RJ Barrett, Manuel Quickly, you know, and they got Julius Randle, you know, kind of anchoring everything. Uh, first off, I love Emmanuel Quickly. I, I I wish he had stayed another year. Turns out he didn't need to. Right. Uh, I mean, he is. I wouldn't be surprised if he won Rookie of the Year. That's how good I think he's doing. Dang. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, you know, they're eighteen and eighteen. Which, how many games did they win last year? Like twenty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. That to me has been the biggest surprise for me, and, and you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad about it. I mean, I'm not a big Knicks fan, but. I, I can be. They got three UK players on their team. Yeah, four so. UK players. Do they? Man, was three. Nerlens, Kevin Knox, Julius Randle, oh. and Emmanuel Quickly. I forgot about Kevin Knox. Yeah, he's kind of falling off a cliff. Which we can go dive. He's he's regressed so much. I feel bad for the guy because I think he got got his confidence shaken. Um, yeah, just too many coaches and not enough consistency. Too too many bad teams. Yeah. And that's my concern with this Knicks team is, yeah, Tom Thibodeau is doing that, but I'd be curious to see what their minutes per game are like because Tom Thibodeau has that habit right. of running his freaking teams in the ground. I mean, they can you can attribute Derrick Rose's knee problems to Tom Thibodeau, honestly. Like, that's what it well, is. Derrick Rose is on that team too, so. Yeah. Well, he's been following Tibbs around everywhere. He was with them when he was with Minnesota too. Um, I also have – Thankfully, the Phoenix Suns is one of my surprise teams. Yeah, yeah. They're doing a lot. I mean, I, th I thought they were going to be good. I thought, you know, the addition of Chris Paul was going to be really nice, but I didn't think they would be freaking second in the West nice, 23-11. and 11. Like, Yeah, well, you know, they were 8-0 in the bubble. I thought, man, they, you know, I, I I thought this year was going to be a good year for them. I, I, you know, I didn't think they were going to be second in the West good. Right, like exactly. Said. You know, I thought maybe a you know a four or five seed best case scenario, and you know, there's still a lot of season to play, so it could right. still end up happening. But well, the fact that Chris Paul being there just he got he has to create so many openings for Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, like right. And then you know the Jazz, of course. With I found it, I don't know, man. Like I like the Jazz. I like Donovan Mitchell, but I hate Rudy Gobert. I cannot stand Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Um, but I love Mike Conley. I mean, I don't know this team. This team, and they got Bo Boyan Bogdanovich from Little Pacer. Like, I just didn't think they, they would Derek, be number one in the. Yeah, they got Derek Favors and Jordan Clarkson. And it's you know, feels good for him. And has a bouquet. Kalina. No, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, Kalina has a buki. but we'll see. Yeah, because you know, All Star game, Pacers are playing tonight. Last game before the break. I'm curious to see. They're they're losing to the Nuggets right now. They're down by nine. Boston just yeah, the, Boston's just beating Toronto, the, and the Knicks, Knicks are, are pounding the Detroit. Mm. Yeah, Jesus. Nice. So I'd be curious to see what's going on after the All Star break. You know, let's see how these standings. Because after the All Star break, the Pacers get Karis LeVert and TJ Warren back. So, I think that's freaking a combined more forty more points a game. If you know, depending on usage. Did you see TJ McConnell's weird triple double? He yeah, had? ten steals, dude. He's only the eleventh player ever to get a triple double with steals. And saying he's the first player in NBA history to get a triple double with steals with per shooting perfect from the field. He was eight for eight. And he didn't attempt a free throw. Yeah. 
That's crazy. I, I, just, That's, I read that and I'm like, what the hell? Grindhouse, man. That dude plays with so much goddamn heart. And when I went when I went with Skyler to the Pacers game, uh, yeah, man, he's just so quick on that court, dude. Like he is everywhere, um, and he's just 100 percent hustle at all times. I just love it. Um, so I'm curious to see what this lineup's going to be like uh, when Karis when Karis LeVert and TJ Warren come back for the Pacers. I'm excited to see how this team functions at 100 percent. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of room, a wiggle room in the East. To... Yeah, like you said, I think what you say between four and ten is like one game or something like that. Yeah, one and a half games. Yeah, like they're seventeen and eighteen, and they're right in it. Um, you know, we can kind of close out tonight. I think we should talk. We have to talk about JJ Watts Arizona. Honestly, like that's you know the biggest news. Well. Yeah, you know, a lot of people were surprised about it, but, uh, you know, he, he, Cardinals wasn't on any of the list that people were mentioning, but you know, remember, DeAndre Hopkins was recruiting him there for yeah. a while, and I was like, yeah, I'm not surprised to see him go there. But plus, pairing up with Chandler Jones, like... Dude, that's going to be nasty. If he gets back to his pre-injury form, yeah. that's going to be a steal for the Cardinals. Yeah, 100%. That's what I had in my notes. I was like, if he can stay healthy, him and Chandler Jones... With Pat Pete in the secondary, like they're going to be able to rush four at all times because you got run stoppers up front. You're going to have Pat Pete locking down the secondary, and I think do they have Hassan Reddick as also as middle linebacker? I think he's a great middle linebacker if he's still there or he used to be. Um, I don't know if they still have him anymore, but I was a big fan of Hassan Reddick. Um. Let's see. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, let's say. Yeah, he came out of Temple. That's right. Yeah, I always liked him. Um, and and plus, think... you know, it's not like Arizona is a bad team either. You know, they went eight and eight, and were pretty close to making the playoffs. So. Right, and who doesn't? I mean, Arizona. He it's warm all the time. Like it's the same climate. He's a you know a lot drier than Houston probably because it's humid as fuck down there. Um you know, longevity in your career, like, you know, and that's another, somebody else pointed out, like a lot of people in their, you know, later into their careers pick the Arizona Cardinals to go to Emmett Smith, Kurt Warner. <laughs> yeah. Carson Palmer. I mean, I don't know something. Also, there. I remember uh, Carson Palmer said he wished he had got drafted by the Cardinals. Yeah. So they're doing something right in there in their organization. Um, man. So, but I think that kind of fills out our list of topics for this week. I mean, next week I think I'm going to put a, a little Twitter and see if there's anything that, you know, anybody out there in the world of the Internet would like us to talk about or want to touch base on. And I know, you know, moving forward, you know, once we get into our routine, we're going to have some guest guest appearances to talk about. Because I don't know anything about the Cubs, so we'll probably get Kyle on here to talk about the Cubs. Skyler on here to talk about the Cardinals. I could see those two go back and forth. That'd be a lot of fun to watch. Um, and then, you know, especially as we get closer, I think free agency opens up for the NFL on the 18th, I believe, in March. And yeah. I think I think that'll be a good, you know, that's a thir- that's a Thursday. So, honestly, that night show, if we want to continue to do once a week every Thursday, <laughs> that night show we could be, you know, breaking some news. Um get my sources in line, you know, just become the next Adam Schefter. No, um, and kind of, kind of see how, you know, when the big signings happen, see how they're going to fit in their new, new environments. Cause Ravens, please give me Allen Robinson. That's all I want is Allen Robinson in a Ravens uniform. I'll buy that. I'll buy that Jersey. The second he signs, um, that's all I can, that's all I ever want on Allen Robinson or some other stud wide receiver. I don't care. Juju Smith Schuster or something. Um, other than that, I got nothing left on my agenda, Travis. You got anything left? Nope, I got nothing left. All right, well, everybody that is watching that has popped in throughout the stream, I appreciate it. I'll be uploading this to our YouTube channel. Um, I'll be sending that link out once I get that all created. So follow my Twitter at Tyler Denton. I need to get that on there and, and follow Travis's Twitter on. Ooh, Kenny Galladay, Kyle. Yeah, that'd be a good one, too. Um follow travis at xkx travesty on twitter um and for any updates we're going to be looking to do this once a week 
uh, kind of just pick our brains for any kind of sports stuff, kind of give you guys an, a, a chance to, you know, interact through the chat as well. So appreciate anybody that's out there. Have a good one.